All right, so I'd like to start today with a question to think about. Which of these two students would you say is a chemical engineering major, and which is a history and education major? Now I know we've all been taught not to judge a book by its cover, but I think it's fair to say there are first impressions and stereotypes out there that affect the way we see the world and the way the world sees us. Now I can attest to the first impressions of these two because I know them each personally, and I made my own initial assumptions that were probably very similar to what some of you are thinking right now. So this here is Haley. She was a chemical engineering major who is now an employed chemical engineer, and she graduated from my high school. And that there is Hank. He's a history and education major, and he's the boyfriend of a friend. Now these are probably not the first impressions you got of Haley and Hank, and they certainly weren't mine. And that's exactly the problem that our society faces here today. One of the first things we introduce ourselves with is our major or career, a choice that reflects who we think we are and where we think our lives are going. But unfortunately for many women in our society today, that choice of a college major or a career reflects so much more. It reflects the socialized idea of what a woman should be and where a woman should go. Now our society has created a gender gap in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM fields, where women are largely absent. This gender gap is due to the negative influence of our societal stereotypes against girls' desires to enter and success in STEM. Now, personally, I am one of these few women in STEM. As a biological sciences major, I have experienced firsthand the negative pressures girls face not to be in these hard science or STEM fields. Now, I know this is a path for me because medicine and healthcare are my passions, and I have the dream of becoming a physician. I have not been immune, though, to the self-doubt and stereotypes of women in STEM. So, in order to better understand the reality of this problem, we'll first examine the staggering gender difference in STEM fields today and then look at the ways that women are socialized further and further away from STEM. And finally, examine a solution that all of us here can adopt today. So, with that in mind, as you may have heard, women in STEM is a pretty key phrase of this generation, with many looking to large increases in women's involvement. But, according to a Washington Post 2015 article, women falling behind in STEM bachelor's degrees, while women and men are both now much more likely to enter STEM majors than they were in 2004, the women have shown much less growth than the men, even decreasing greatly from 2004 to 2014 in the amount of female computer science majors. And as can be seen by looking at this graph, where each set of two bars represents one STEM-related major, the presence of females has decreased in every single one of these pairs from the bar on the left, which is 2004, to the bar on the right, which is 2014. Now this shows that even while we may think women in STEM is improving, According to the data, there's been a decrease in the percentage of women in all of these STEM-related majors just within the last decade. So, with that in mind, how many women engineers, mathematicians, or computer scientists could you think of? Not many? That would make sense. Because according to the National Girls Collaborative 2013 statistic, while women receive over half of the bachelor's degrees awarded in biological sciences, they receive far fewer in computer science, engineering, and mathematics. But women are still making great achievements in the workforce, though, considering women fill close to half of all jobs in the U.S. economy. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce 2011 report, women in STEM, a gender gap to innovation. But according to that same report, these amazing women hold less than 25% of all STEM jobs. And unfortunately, that statistic has held the same throughout the past decade, even as college-educated women have increased their share of the overall workforce. So fine, maybe women just don't see any interest in STEM or don't see a reason to pursue the fields. But according to that same Department of Commerce report, these amazing women can earn on average 33% more when they take place in STEM high growth fields, which presents a draw and a reward for women entering STEM. Even with this clear benefit though, women are still straying away from the fields. So there's clearly a gender gap in STEM fields today. But it's also clear we are no longer in the society of the 1950s, where women are expected to stay at home and not work. Women have equal rights and are on paper fully capable of achieving success in any career, including STEM. The experience I want to break down here for you today is the way our society as a whole, women and men together, is taking that fully achievable goal and slowly making it harder and harder for women to achieve. No matter how successful a woman is, she is taught by society that STEM fields are not welcome to her and that teaching has occurred over her entire lifetime. So, let's take a look at the effect that teaching can truly have over women's limited presence in STEM. There's a Verizon Wireless 2014 commercial entitled Inspire Her Mind, 
that highlights some of the key impact our stereotypes can have on a young girl's life. The video opens with a girl named Sarah running through a meadow as a toddler and her mother calling out to her, who's my pretty girl? As Sarah grows older, we see her playing in a river out in the woods and her mother cautions her, careful, don't get your dress dirty. Then when Sarah's a preteen playing with a starfish out in the ocean, her father cautions her, honey, you don't want to mess with that. Then when Sarah's working on a solar system project, hanging sparkly planets and stars from her ceiling, her mother interrupts her, whoa, this project has gotten out of control. And then lastly, when Sarah's a teenager working on building a model rocket and using a power drill to screw in the final bolt, Sarah's father quickly exclaims, hey, careful with that. Why don't you hand that to your brother? So while in isolation, these points may seem harmless and probably sound very similar to what you and I heard growing up. When you look at it carefully, over Sarah's entire lifetime, she was led away from every scientific exploration she took part in. So how then when Sarah's biggest support system, her own family, slowly led her away from all of her scientific interests, could Sarah have ever developed an interest or a passion for STEM? Now the important thing to remember is Sarah's experience is not unique to her or her family. Our society subtly over time leads many women away from their own scientific interests. So with that in mind, let's follow the experience of one young girl throughout her socialization in our society. This young girl, like many boys and girls, would play with toys and games as a child. So if you log on right now to the Toys R Us website, the featured brands are separated by boys and girls toys. Boys have brands like Hot Wheels, Minecraft, Lego, Star Wars, Transformers, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. While girls have brands like Disney's Frozen, Barbie, Disney Princess, My Little Pony, Monsters High, and Doc McStuffins. Now these are far different skills and interests that we're marketing towards our young boys and girls. Boys are being taught bravery, problem solving, engineering, and building while girls are being taught creativity, beauty, and group play. And even if we look at Doc McStuffins, which shows the main character acting as a female doctor, Doc McStuffins still only cares for stuffed animals, treating minor cuts and bruises, acting more as a nurturing motherly role rather than an independent female scientist. So already at a young age, we are teaching our young boys far different skills and interests that leads to a separation in their opportunities for success and goals for the future. So then let's follow our young girl one step further into middle school. She'll begin to look for role models to cultivate the interest she's developing. If we look at specifically the STEM role models out there, boys have figures like Stephen Hawking, Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Wozniak, Bill Gates, and many more famous household name male scientists and engineers. Girls, on the other hand, have the historic figures of Rosalind Franklin, Marie Curie, the modern day Jane Goodall, and the fictional Amy Farrah Fowler from CBS's The Big Bang Theory, who was circled in white on the right. Now, in order to make a list that was even comparable to that of the boys, I had to include these fictional characters and historic figures. Because throughout doing my research, the only modern day household name female scientist is Jane Goodall. And even if we look at Amy Farrah Fowler and the real life Maya Bialik, who plays her character, Maya Bialik holds a real life PhD in neuroscience. Unfortunately, though, this fact was not publicly known until her character, Amy, had received high success and fame, thus showing that Mayim's career as an actor was held more notably in the public eye before her career as an academic. So how are girls to fuel any interest they have in the STEM fields when the deck is already so stacked against them and then they have no one to look up to? Now, the important thing to remember is these experiences so far have only followed our young girl to the young age of 14 and already she has been led away from STEM and disadvantaged in the field. Then if we follow our young girl into high school and college, the effect of these stereotypes truly begins to set in. This harsh reality was reinforced several different times in the United States, France, Germany, and many other countries, all which replicated a simple study. They gave boys and girls a simple math test and either told them before the test, the test had previously shown gender differences or had not. When the boys and girls were told the test had shown gender differences, the girls performed significantly worse than the boys. Now this resu result was not shown when the boys and girls were not told that simple fact. Unfortunately, this result was replicated every time the study was done, in every country, and in every age group. And unfortunately, it was replicated in 2008, when Danner and Crandell did a study on the AP Calculus AB exam. 
They ask girls either to provide their gender before taking the exam or after. When girls were asked to provide their gender before taking the exam, their score was reduced by 33% as compared to girls who were asked to provide their gender after. Now that translates to an additional 5.9% of girls who would have received college credit for calculus had they not been asked to provide their gender when taking the exam. Now the ramifications of this continue when you look at what the College Board says, skills in AP Calculus AB can lead to a future in. They can lead to a future in 139 different career areas and 48 college majors, many of which are STEM related. So these unfortunate statistics stack up to show the effect those early divisions and lack of female role models have on our young girls' success and willingness to enter STEM. In isolation, these points may seem minuscule or unrelated. But when viewed together, the negative long-term impact of our gendered stereotypes becomes clear. Now, it was not one small comment from a parent or a Barbie doll or even an episode of the Big Bang Theory. It was the combined impact of every phrase, every toy, and every role model our girls are exposed to over their lifetime. The opportunity in STEM for women was slowly driven away and obscured behind our socialization into femininity. And I was almost one of those girls led away from STEM. When I took a tour of my very scientifically and mathematically focused high school, I was scared to attend. I was scared to attend and be labeled a nerd or have to abandon my love of fashion and romantic comedies. I had been socialized into believing that STEM was unavailable to a girly girl like me. Thankfully though, on that tour I met Haley, the woman I introduced you to at the beginning of the presentation. The day I met Haley, she had just won the Miss Teen Maryland pageant and was in her full hair, makeup, heels, crown and sash building a robot. Haley taught me that day that it was okay to be a girl in STEM because all that mattered was STEM was fun. Haley taught me I could still maintain all the girly aspects of myself I love and be confident in the STEM fields. Haley was my role model. Haley is the reason I stand before you today as a biological sciences major who is a member of several honor societies and conducts undergraduate research, but at the same time is chief administrative officer of her sorority, Cap Alpha Theta. So as I and many other women have experienced, our negative gendered stereotypes are greatly affecting women and girls' desires to enter STEM. And that is the reason for the gender gap that we see today. Now the improvement of women in STEM is an all society issue, not one that a single compelling person can change. It needs a change in the way we approach women, the way we raise our daughters, and the messages each one of us sends to the women around us. So why not end this cycle of stereotypes today? Be that person that Haley was for me a reassurance that I can be a girl and be confident in the STEM fields. Show a young girl that STEM is fun, or be the role model she has yet to find in this world. All of us here today, regardless of our college major, gender, or career, have the power to impact young girls. Take this challenge among yourself in any small way you can. Challenge some way that society stereotypes our young women and girls, if for nothing else but to allow all young girls to be the best and brightest girls they can be. Thank you.